this is first our lectures which we took about genetic ultrasound and we start serial lectures to talk in details about advanced ultrasound vital medicine first important to you must understand by term genetic ultrasound what's the definition of genetic ultrasound that's criteria of genetic ultrasound what is recommendation for genetic ultrasound and this is important to enter in details in many lectures next about every organ system anomalies and the trisomy syndromes and ultrasound soft markers genetic ultrasound definition is very important genetic ultrasound requirement genetic ultrasound criteria it's very important to read lectures genetic ultrasound this is lectures and we hope by these lectures after we finish it to give us more informative tools for evaluation of high-risk pregnancy, high-risk fetus, to take good decisions about terminations, about continuing fetus, time of delivery, a Doppler study, and so on. Genetic ultrasound. Genetic ultrasound is a technique which fetus are examined for anatomical defects that have been associated with an abnormalities. A genetic or level 3 ultrasound specialized evaluation of the baby performed by maternal vital. Genetic ultrasound recommendation. Recommended for, for women who have a family history of genetic disorder, previous child a genetic abnormality would be over 35 at the time of delivery, have a chronic illness, have exposure to certain medications or chemicals, have abnormal clinical or Genetic ultrasound requirement detailed the knowledge of vital anatomy and development, experience with birth defects and genetic disorders, expertise in counseling and the management of specific genetic disorders, proficiency using color flow doubler, proficiency using 4D high resolution ultrasound. Genetic disorder is one of the most informative tools in high risk pregnancy. A high resolution Ultrasound used to provide detailed vital anatomy and uterine contents. The examination includes measurement of the vital head, the abdomen, extremities, and the other structure. The doctor also examines and describes the vital organs, including appearance of the brain, appearance of the lungs and the forward chamber view of the heart, detailed examination of extremities, appearance of the diaphragm, appearance of the stomach, kidneys, and the urinary bladder. Finally, the placenta is measured with its size, appearance, position, amniotic period, number of umbilical vessels, umbilical cord, and so on. Cervical os, and all this exam in genetic ultrasound. This is illustrations in some abnormalities associated with increased risk for down, like increased nacal translucency, trichotomy regurgitation, VSCD, Hypercogenic bowel, double bowel sign, retinal atresia, brural effusions, dilated lateral ventricles. This is major sound marker as we took. Ultrasound levels. Level 1 is a basic ultrasound. Level 1 documented the baby's heart rate, measuring size of the vetus, ultrasound biometry, general overview. Level 2, we will look for things like left palate, heart defects, neurotube defect, IUGR and Doppler study and the more details. Level 3 or ultrasound to vital abnormalities such as ones seen in Down syndrome. Ultrasound markers. What we mean by ultrasound markers? What types of ultrasound markers? Type of ultrasound markers, major or hard marker, structural abnormalities, karyotype, evil isolated, Main or soft markers karyotype if associated with other findings. This two types and main or soft and hard ultrasound markers. For every organ system, we see major hard and main or soft ultrasound marker. CNS, we see ventriculomegaly, holoprosencephaly, microcephaly, dysgenesis of corpus callosum, abnormal posterior force and the walker complex. This is major hard ultrasound marker. Main or soft choroid plexus cyst. Musculoskeletal, we see hand and feet anomalies, syntactyl, clinodactyl, clenched fist, radial ray aplesia, club foot, and rocker bottom foot. Main or marker, short, long bones. Face, hard markers, cleft palate, lips, micrognesia, microglossia, hypo and hypertelorism, low seat ears, and small ears.
Nick, we see major markers like cystic hygroma, major like knocker full sickening, cardiac, we see major like endocardial cushion defect, VECD, hypoblastic left hand syndrome, tetralogy of palate, and other complex anomalies. Major like ecogenic focus within heart. In GIT, we see major heart marker like osteophageal angiotensin atresia, small bowel obstruction, diaphragmatic hernia, and phallocele. Menor like ecogenic bowel, genital renal, moderate to severe hydronephrosis, splastic renal disease, and renal agenesis. Menor like renal pyrectasis. Others, IUGR in second trimester hydrops. Two facial cord, single umbilical cord. This Definition of soft ultrasound marker. Soft ultrasound marker are menor ultrasound abnormalities. Considered variants of normal which do not constitute a structural defect. They may be associated with chromosomal or non chromosomal abnormalities. Soft markers include those associated with increased risk of an aeploidy and, in some cases, non chromosomal problems like knuckle translucency, nasal bone hypoplasia, knuckle body edema, cogenic bowel, cogenic focus in the heart. Correct plex assist, mild ventricular megaly. Soft marker is associated with increased risk of non chromosomal abnormalities when seen in isolation. Mild renal bilictasis, single umbilical artery, and large system. Those of undefined association like clenched fists, rocker bottom feet, sandal gap, stroke peri shaped skull, short. Minor markers, white iliac crest angle, more than 19 degree, brachycephaly, frontal shortening, abnormal short hair lens, flat face, clinodactyl, hypoplasia of middle phalanx of the fifth digit, sandal gap of grade 2, semi increase, small. Finally, mark the detection by ultrasound depends on personal experience of the operator, depends on proper timing of the scan, depends on the Mothers, it's obese, sick abdominal wall, distended abdominal gases. Proper timing of the scan is very important. As we see in large gestational age, it is difficult to scan because large organs, the proportion to each other, decrease amount of amniotic fluid, may be improper position of the vetus, face down, and so on. This is with proper time is between 20 and 10. This Disadvantage of soft markers. The exact significance of ultrasound soft markers is still uncertain. This is operator dependent, therefore may be missed. The detection of soft ultrasound markers requires training and high resolution ultrasound equipment. The counseling, training and expertise required is currently difficult to achieve. Some soft markers are transient and significance uncertain. With a better equipment, more markers may be more evident, which may cause more concern to be prospective parent. Unless caution exercise is combined with other markers for abnormalities, may lead to unnecessary intervention. Screening scan, 16 to 20 weeks. What we do? Screening scan for every fetus, every mother we do. Look for knuckle fall. Ecogenic bowel, ventricular megaly, cogenic cardiac focus, choroid brex assist, single umbilical artery, large sternal mandala, renal bilictasis. We must look for this if breast. Knuckle translucency. Knuckle translucency, this is normal knuckle translucency, it's abnormal knuckle translucency. It is maximum thickness of the subcutaneous translucency between the skin and the soft tissue overlying cervical spine, this area. Maximum thickness between the skin and soft tissue overlying cervical spine. This is abnormal increased knuckle, knuckle translucency measured between 11 and 14 weeks of pregnancy. It is a soft marker of screening for chromosomal abnormalities, trisomy 18 and 21. So, rather compression, diaphragmatic hernia, cardiac abnormalities. This is knuckle translucency association. The Fritzsche diagnosis knuckle translucency, cystic hygroma sickness. This knuckle translucency between two white lines, skin and soft tissue over like cervical spine, is 5 mm knuckle translucency to the others. This is three way of wrong measurement of knuckle translucency, and this is right way from white line to the other. This is knuckle translucency 2 mm knuckle skin fold, okay. knuckle bed sickness all fold. It is the skin sickness in the posterior aspect of the vital neck. 
it should be measured between 15 and 20 weeks of gestation. This is second trimester form of lacquer translucency. It's found in about 0.5 percentage of the fetus, and it may be of no pathological significance. Sometimes associated with chromosomal defects, cardiac anomalies, infection, genetic syndromes, isolated macular edema. The risk for trisomy 21 may be 15 times the macular fall. It is second trimester form of knuckle translucency between these two calibers. Knuckle fall, 60 mm or more significant for structure survey must be done if it is more than 60 mm. Sensitivity for downs 43 percentage warrants cardiotyping even if knuckle edema or fold of more than 60 mm as we see in second knuckle fold. This is very important. Another image. Increased knuckle translucency, knuckle bed sickness, 6 mm or or. This is knuckle bed sickness, increased knuckle translucency, and this is knuckle bed sickness in width. This is 15 weeks in gestations, and we saw the scanning 6 mm knuckle translucency. A chronic various sampling study of this fetus revealed 18. As we see after termination, this fetus lose edematous skin over the neck, accounting for knuckle translucent scanning. This is knuckle translucency between two calibers, between two white line distance, first distance 6.3, second distance 0.15 centimeters. This area, this is skin thickness, this is area of knuckle translucent. Ecogenic bowels, what we mean ecogenic bowel? Pale bowel, as ecogenic as bone. Common to cause intraamnotic bleeding associated with renal failure, trisomy 21, infection, cytomegalovirostic fibrosis. Hyperecogenic bowel found about 0.5% of fetus, usually if no pathological significance. But for isolated hyperecogenic bowel, the risk of trisomy 21 may be three, t three times the background. This we see ecogenic bowel like density of bone. In the, this is bone of the view. This is five image of ecogenic bowels. Ecogenic bowel, ecogenic bowel, ecogenic bowel, ecogenic bowel, and ecogenic bowel. Like density of bone, as we see in mind. Association with an eye There is high risk of association with trisomy 13, 18, and 21. This is ecogenic bowel. Association with structural abnormalities. Ecogenic bowel has been associated with increased risk for cystic fibrosis, congenital infection, cytomegalovirus, herpes parvovirus, rupella, varicella, toxoplasmosis. Intra-amniotic bleeding, congenital malformation of the bowel, prenatal complication, including IUGR. Choroid plexus cysts, sonographically fluid field, small cyst, less than 3 mm in the choroid plexus, within the lateral cerebral ventricles. It's seen in 1 to 2 percentage of the fetus scanned at 16 weeks and will be almost all with 24 to 26 weeks. Isolated choroid breaks assist 0 0.7 to 3.6 of normal fetus, no pathological significance. Isolated CBC with no other abnormality calls for no intervention. 2.3% risk of chromosomal abnormality. They are more associated with trisomy 18 Edwards than trisomy 21 Down. In chromosomally normal babies, association with structure may be seen. This is choroid breaks assist. A small fluid field sac or cyst present in the this is choroid plexus cyst being unilateral or bilateral single or multiple 3 to 10 millimeter regress by 6 weeks this is 3 image of choroid plexus cyst this and and this is 3 choroid plexus whole bruising kefali it is major ultrasound marker hard ultrasound markers warrant karyotyping this is one of the three fluid in brain. We see H whole bruise cephaly, H hydrocephaly, H hydra and cephaly. We talk later on in, that in details. A lower whole bruise cephaly at 10 weeks, trisomy 18, found in this fetus with a lower cephaly. A large cisterna magna, if the cisterna magna is subjectively increased, a measurement should be taken. An isolated enlarged cisterna magna is not an indication for beta karyotyping. With an enlarged cisterna magna expert, a review is recommended for follow up ultrasound and the possible imaging modalities like MRI and investigations. This is enlarged cisterna magna, as we see in this image between two. 
mild vitriculomegaly. Vitriculomegaly, the lead is less stable for intracale, more than 10, 10 to 12. 5% risk for lateral severe brain abnormality, 5% risk for later severe brain abnormality, 15% risk of mild problem later. The commonest abnormality trisomy 21 down and 18, 13, and triploidy. This is ventriculomegaly. We found this mild ventriculomegaly between 10 and 15. This is ventriculomegaly larger than major ventriculomegaly, a large lateral ventricles more than 15. Cogenic cardiac vocus located in the corda tendony, not attached to ventricular walls. Moves with EV valves. 90% left ventricle, single or multiple, 95% resolve spontaneously. In high risk group, five fold increase for downs. Peace view to visualize ecogenic cardiovocus in four chamber view. Search for other markers. If isolated ecogenic cardiovocus abnormality, no action. Ecogenic focus should be considered normal variant. Ecogenic cardiac vocus abnormalities which will be considered. Acogenic intracardiac vocus in the left ventricle of the heart. It is a vocus of an ecogenic wall, small area. Ecogenic small area in the vital heart with ecogenicity comparable or greater than to the surrounding bone. In low risk population, if most ecogenic intracardiac vocus disappear by term or after a short time after delivery. Ecogenic bowel like surrounding bone Ecogenic cardiovocus density, ecogenicity like surrounding bone. This is as we see by two white arrow ecogenic cardiac focus. Short to long bones, femur and humerus. Definition Short to femur and humerus length is defined as measurement less than the third centile for the gestational age. Isolated short to femur or humerus length is associated with an aploidy and should be referred for tertiary level evaluation. Short long bones may be associated with general skeletal malformation or FGR, ultrasound screening for others. Long bone and serial growth measurement should be un short femur. If the femur below fifth centile and or other measurement are normal, the baby is likely to be normal, but rather short. Really the sign of a dwarfism. Isolated short femur, really sign of dwarfism. So we are not worry about this sign if isolated. Short femur found in four times as commonly in trisomy 21 in Down syndrome fetus compared to the normal fetus. However, there is some evidence that isolated short femur may not be more common in trisomic fetus. Short small bones, feet and hand. Syntactyl associated with triploidy. Sandal gap with trisomy 21, polydactyl with trisomy 13, overlapping fingers, rocker bottom feet, and the telebus 18. Semi increase, one of the soft ultrasound marker of the pelvic thesis means dilated renal pelvis 5 to 10 mm with no calcial involvement. Unilateral or bilateral, scan for other markers. If in isolation, no further action may indicate obstructive pathology follow-up scans. Predictive value range from 1 to 33, 1 to 340. Renal pelvis measurement more than 10 mm should be considered as equivalent to congenital hydrophrosis. As we see in this image, bilateral renal bilectasis, bilateral dilated renal pelvis. Mild bilectasis in this image, as the risk of Down syndrome is small. Vital bilectasis is associated with congenital hydrophobus of zycholytric reflux. All fetus with renal perfect measurement 5 mm should have an neonatal ultrasound and the pediatric follow up to evaluate if it is congenital obstructive uropathy, congenital perfurotric junctions, or isolated renal bilectasis and will be resolved. Other anomaly, what's called two fissile cord. The presence of two fissile cord can be a marker of an aploidy. It is soft ultrasound marker. This is not typically searched for in the first trimester, but this finding can be recognized in a teen weeks fetus. 
one would look for a two-facial cord if the vetus has other finding, such as sick knuckle lucency, for instance. Association with structure anomalies, an isolated single umbilical cord has been associated with cardiac renal anomalies and vital growth restriction, FGR. 0.2-1% of pregnancy present with two-facial cord. Among this, about 1-10% have an aneuploidy, including trisomy 18, 13, triploidy, and X. As we see in this image, coral doppler and inner doppler demonstrate two facial cord in a teen week vetus. Single umbilical cord in this image, as we see by arrow, this is single cord. As a single umbilical cord, imaging by B mode and the color mode and constructive image, as we see, this is artery black arrow point to it and vein white arrow and single artery colored and related to urinary short fetal ear lens also short fetal ear lens may be a marker of fetal aneuploidy adequate evaluation has not been undertaken to establish its usefulness as either a screening tool or as a part of panel for markers for tertiary centers use of fetal ear lens remains relegated tools as we see in these three images, flat air, slightly protruding air, markedly protruding curved air, and one of the soft ultrasound genital anomalies. The schedules, air lens related to gestational age, inhales vetus and unemployed fetuses, flat airs, slightly protruding airs, markedly protruding airs, curved airs. This is many factor, four factor, as we see in health fetus, fetus. Stroke periscal, transverse scan, as we see in this image, axial scan, flattening of the occiput with a pointed appearance with the frontal bones. 45% ancillus trisomy 18, about strawberry skull, may be associated with skeletal dysplasia, may be normal. Mesocardic defect and duodenal atresia both warrants karyotyping, as we double bubble sign of duodenal atresia, and this is mesocardic defect. This is current concept is about vital nasal bone. It is one of the ultrasound markers, as we see in Down syndrome, hypoplasia and this is normal. Hypoplasia of nasal bones, and this is normal nasal This is nasal bone present, as we see three white lines, two white lines by head of arrow, it's a skin, third line by arrow, this is nasal bone. Nasal bone seen by this white arrow. Nasal bone absent, as in this image, Nasal bone absent, two white line, as we see in this, this is skin, nasal bone absent. Small nasal bone, as we see in this white arrow in Down syndrome, this is small white dot lines, this is small nasal bone absent or small nasal bone indicative of Down syndrome. 15 to 20 weeks hypoplasia, 70 percentage downs, 1 percentage normal. Neither hypoplasia has not been associated with other aneuploidy. Absence or nasal bone hypoplasia has not been found to be associated with structural abnormalities. Even when isolated warrants karyotyping the bone. Central cleft palate and lip, as we see by the double bubble. This is also one of the ultrasound markers. Double bubble, duodenal atresia, double bubble signs. 30 to 40 percentage of risk rhizome 13 and the 18. Clinodactyl imaging of the outstretched hand to evaluate for fifth finger clinodactyl. It's not an expectation during the 16 to 20 week ultrasound. Fifth finger clinodactyl is associated to rhizome 21 and should be considered for research or tertiary level. Increased iliac angle. Increased iliac angle is a possible marker for trisomy 21. However, measurement techniques don't make it amenable to screening examination, and it has not been evaluated to be effective in a low-risk population. This marker may be useful for tertiary centers investigating high-risk patient or as a possible vectors. Sandal gap, no further investigation or follow-up are necessary if isolated sandal gap are detected, one of the ultrasound soft markers. It is not part of the sound. We talked about screening ultrasound before. Tight onion, when onion is too close to the vetus in which the gestational sac is predominantly occupied by the extra amniotic column, and the amniotic cavity is tightly wrapped around the vetus.
as we see in this image. Those fetus are often at risk of trisomy 16 or triploid. As we see in this image, I'm in very tight opposite around this embryo. The embryo later miscarried and was identified as trisomy. Yolk sac anomalies. Several papers demonstrate that an irregular yolk sac, two large yolk sac, are factors that are predictors of pregnancies that will end up as a miscarriage in the first. Major structure anomalies. The presence of certain major structure anomalies should also promote a karyotype. At 9 and 18 weeks, one appeared to have an omphalocele greater than the normal physiological herniation of the guts and had trisomy 18. The other one had a large obstructed bladder and a small omphalocele and indeed have trisomy 13. Last had a low barholoprosone cutali, also seen with trisomy 18. This about association of some major structure abnormalities with congenital or chromosome. As we see omphalocele at 9 weeks in this fetus associated with trisomy. Omphalocele, as we seen, cystic hygroma warrants karyotyping. It's one of ultrasound soft markers. Megacystis, enlarged urinary bladder, point and pinhole sign seen in posterior lateral valve, as in this image, enlarged urinary bladder. This is in this fetus seen associated and they may be isolated. Shipless embryo is an embryo with no distinctive head and the body at time when this finding should be recognized. This can be a sign of very serious trisomies, usually very lethal trisomies such as trisomy 8, schistoid. Wide iliac crest, one of ultrasound soft mass. And this schedule, as we've seen, the prevalence of the fetal chromosomal defect in fetus with isolated and multiple abnormalities. Ventricular megaly, holoprosencephaly, choroid plexus, cystis, posterior fossa cyst, cleft valet, facial cleft, macrognesia, cystic hygroma, knuckle edema, diaphragmatic hernia, heart defect, general atresia, exosalmus, telepath, gross retardations. We hope in these examinations to uh, give any information or multiple information about genetic ultrasound, about ultrasound, soft marker, ultrasound, hand marker, enumerate we must be aware of it its significance and we complete in the next lectures about some chromosomal abnormalities trisomies and syndromes how we diagnose it